Let's start with the man himself, James Gandolfini, our beloved Tony Soprano. James Gandolfini was as far from Tony Soprano in real life as you could imagine. Fans describe him as quiet and almost shy, but incredibly kind. One fan recalls how Gandolfini generously helped pay for his friend's kids to go through college, just because he could. What'd you check? African-American. So we don't understand each other here. Despite his massive fame, he remained humble and generous. Picture this. You're at a bar in Williamsburg, sipping on a martini when Tony Soprano walks in. One couple had just this experience. Gandolfini not only joined them for a drink, but also ordered rounds of oysters and martinis. And in true Tony Soprano fashion, he drops 500 bucks on the bar and speeds off on a yellow Vespa. Dad. Let's get something straight. You eat, I pay. Now that's a story for the ages. But that's not the only story about James. Another fan remembers sneaking onto a golf course where Gandolfini and Furio the beekeeper were filming a scene. Despite interrupting their lunch, Gandolfini was extremely nice, even shooing away a woman who tried to kick the fan out. He signed a poster for the fan, despite the fan's realization that it didn't even feature Furio, Stupid the fucking game, Castelluccio's character. Unfortunately, that poster was later lost in a family divorce, but the memory remains. Now let's move on to Dominic Chianese, who played the sharp-witted Uncle Junior. Chicken's nice and spicy, eh? Dominic is described as dynamic and full of life, just like Uncle Junior. Fans say he's full of hilarious old man quips and can tell stories about old Hollywood that would leave you in stitches. And at 93 years old, he's still sharp and can even carry a tune if you ask nicely. Next up, we have Tony Sirico, Polly Walnuts himself. Oh! Tony was a real-life version of Polly Walnuts, tough as nails and full of personality. One fan delivering pizza in Bay Ridge found themselves face-to-face -face with Polly. In true Polly fashion, Tony gave them a hard time with a stern, Who are you? But that's just Tony being Tony. I said, you remember your first blowjob? He said, yeah. I said, how long did it take for the guy to come? <laughs> Another fan shared a story of how Tony Sirico would get protective over Jamie Lynn Sigler, who played Meadow. When she started bringing a new boyfriend on set, Tony made sure the guy knew not to mess around, just like Pauly would have done. Gabish. Now let's talk about Michael Imperioli, who played the troubled Christopher Moltisanti. Michael Imperioli takes his craft seriously. He's all about the art of acting and directing, so if you want to talk to him, make sure you know your stuff. But that doesn't mean he's not approachable. Jesus, is this fucking necessary? One late night encounter at a Vegas restaurant turned into a long chat with fans, where he showed just how down to earth he really is. Another fan had a brief Q&A with Michael at an event, and was struck by how Michael turned the question back on them, making the interaction more thoughtful and engaging. Mrs. Soprano may have passed, but who's to say there isn't another Mrs. Soprano just like her, or will be? Lorraine Bracco, who played Dr. Melfi, is next. Lorraine Bracco is as sweet as they come. One fan got invited to a private event promoting her wine brand and ended up embarrassingly drunk. Despite this, Lorraine was nothing but gracious, mingling with everyone and making each person feel special. The fan was even treated to an early screening of a Sopranos episode at HBO headquarters. To Lou. Bye-bye. And speaking of sweetness, Drea De Matteo, who played Adriana, also left a lasting impression on fans. Drea is known as the sweetest person you'll ever meet. She treats everyone with kindness and goes out of her way to make sure fans feel comfortable. If you're nervous about meeting her, she'll do her best to put you at ease. What a gem. AJ, cheerleaders, any hotties? Next, we have Robert Eiler, who played AJ. Robert Eiler has had his ups and downs. Some fans found him to be a bit of a jerk, especially during his more troubled years when he struggled with addiction. But others say he's turned a new leaf since getting clean and is much more positive now. It's clear that meeting him can be a mixed experience depending on when you caught him. From Blockbuster? How the fuck you do that? They got Reese's Monkeys working as managers over there. Now let's talk about Carmela herself, Edie Falco. Edie Falco might not be the most engaging with fans, but she's not unfriendly either. She seems to approach fan interactions with a sense of duty, kind and respectful, but not overly enthusiastic. One fan shared a moment at a museum where she complimented their child, showing her softer side. It's clear that for Edie, family time is sacred. Jeez, Louise. Love it. Meadow. And speaking of memorable encounters, here's a fun story about Catherine Narducci, who played Charmaine Bucco on the show. 
So one fan recalls meeting not only Tony Sirico and Vinnie Pastor, but also Catherine Narducci in Pittsburgh about six years ago. Now, Catherine was definitely the life of the party. This fan's older brother seemed to catch her eye. Apparently, she's known for having a thing for younger guys, and she wasn't shy about showing it. She kept rubbing his arm and smiling, making it clear she was having a great time. The fan mentioned that Catherine felt like someone they'd known forever, almost like one of their aunts. It's no surprise they had a blast. Catherine is rumored to be a ton of fun to hang out with, and this encounter certainly backs that up. You've got to love those moments when a celebrity feels like an old friend. Oh, she likes it when you rub a muzzle. And now let's talk about Vinnie Pastor, who played Big Pussy. Vinnie Pastor is as talkative and charming as you'd expect from someone who managed clubs in Jersey. He's full of stories and knows how to work a crowd. One fan who met him on a shoot described him as incredibly kind and more than happy to chat with the young actors on set. Hey, Bush, do you even really exist? <sighs> Steve is exactly what you'd expect if you've ever listened to Talking Sopranos. If you could do better, have your own podcast, you motherfucker. He's straightforward, no nonsense, and just as he appears on screen. However, not everyone had a great experience. One fan who met him at a book signing described him as a bit prickly. It seems Steve might not be the biggest fan of meet and greets. You're the first guest to f*** you up. I love your energy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Jamie Lynn Sigler, who played Meadow, has her own share of fan encounters. Not many stories are out there about Jamie Lynn, but those who've met her describe her as sweet and approachable. She's happy to sign autographs, take pictures, and chat with fans. It's clear that she values her interactions with the people who supported her career. You know I love you more than anything in this world, right? Dad, what are you talking about? Frank Vincent, who played the ruthless Phil Leotardo, also had a softer side. Frank was quiet and unassuming in real life. Fucking empty compliments. I had major fucking coronary disease. Quite the contrast to his on-screen persona. Like James Gandolfini, he didn't quite understand why people loved his character so much, but he appreciated the fans all the same. If you ever got to talk to him, you'd find he was surprisingly easygoing and approachable. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Motherfucking mother! You! You! And we can't forget David Chase, the mastermind behind it all. David Chase has an interesting reputation. He can be incredibly engaging, talking your ear off one moment and then completely closed off the next. Fans say you can see a lot of Tony Soprano in him, especially when it comes to avoiding certain questions, like whether Tony died at the end of the series. See, now people will say, see, he admitted Tony died. <laughs> He'd much rather discuss the more emotional, character-driven moments of the show. Next up, we have Al Sapienza, who played Mikey Grab Bag. You don't belittle a man like Junior Soprano. He's old school. Al Sapienza is described as having a huge personality. He's the kind of guy who's all over you like a salesman, telling stories and keeping you entertained. Fans who've met him say he's a natural born entertainer, just like his character. Hey, Mikey, that's the boy. What boy is that, Tom? The one you sleep with. Oh. Steven Van Zandt brings his rock star persona into his interactions with fans. He's more interested in talking about music than acting, which makes sense given his background with the E Street Band. He can be a bit reserved, but if you catch him at the right moment, he's all jokes and good vibes. One fan even let him use their cell phone in an elevator. A big deal back in 1999. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. David Proval, who played the menacing Richie April, is actually the opposite in real life. Oh yeah? David Proval is known for being incredibly nice and approachable, which is a stark contrast to his on-screen character. Fans say he genuinely appreciates the love he gets for his work and is always up for a chat with those who admire him. Like the pimp says to his hoes, keep him coming. Nancy Marchand, who played the manipulative Livia Soprano, was nothing like her character. Nancy Marchand was the picture of sweetness and charm. A far cry from the cold and calculating Livia Soprano. I don't like that kind of talk. Fans who met her describe her as a lovely, easy to talk to woman, which makes her portrayal of Livia even more impressive. I wish the Lord would take me. Come on, ma. John Ventimiglia, who played Artie Bucco, is another fan favorite. John Ventimiglia is described as warm and convivial, just like the chef he played on The Sopranos. One fan who met him at a charity event said he was incredibly friendly and easy to talk to, which is exactly what you'd hope for from Artie Bucco. You don't want to fuck with a chef, my friend. What? You think you're the only one who knows how to swing a meat cleaver? Federico Castelluccio, 
who played the Stoic Furio, rounds out our list. Federico Castelluccio is as charming as you'd expect. When a fan's wife met him at her nursing job, he was incredibly kind and even went out of his way to get a signed photo for her son. Federico definitely knows how to make a fan's day. And finally, let's talk about Joseph Ganascoli, who played Vito Spatafore. So picture this. A fan's friend and his dad are out at a restaurant on Long Island, Ganascoli's usual haunt, apparently, and they spot him sitting there. Naturally, they decide to walk up and ask for a photo. But instead of just snapping a pic, Ganascoli hits them with a 50-buck charge. Now, that's already a bit steep, right? But it gets even better. When the dad tried to get out of it by saying he didn't have that much cash on him, Ganascoli whips out his phone, complete with one of those card-swiping attachments, ready to take debit or credit on the spot. It's a fucking joke! Right. Sure. The fan's friend and dad tried to politely decline, but Ganascoli wasn't having it. So they ended up with a very awkward photo and a story they'll probably laugh about for years. But honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. He's gotta go! Another fan met him at an Italian festival in Philly, where Ganascoli was selling some pretty interesting merch. We're talking bootleg Soprano shirts with the Bada Bing logo plastered across them in a really tacky way. But the real kicker? He was also selling a photoshopped picture of himself with Tony and Chris. In this pic, Ganascoli's sitting there like the boss, complete with a fake cigar and ashtray, while Tony and Chris stand off to the side, looking all subordinate. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Oh, I'm a fucking captain now. You don't talk to me like that. So there you have it, folks. Real-life encounters with the cast of The Sopranos. From James Gandolfini's generosity to Tony Sirico's poly moments, these stories give us a unique glimpse into who these actors were off-screen. It's amazing to see how they brought their characters to life while staying true to themselves. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you ever met any of the cast? What was your experience like? Share your stories in the comments below. Let's keep The Sopranos train rolling. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more insights into the world of The Sopranos. Thanks for watching, and until next time.